Hi, David Kessmar from the United States here with Ray Tomes from the Cycles Research Institute talking about magnetic reversals of the Earth. Ray, what are you going to tell us about this? Earth? We think has a North Pole up that end. Yeah. Well, what you think's up that end, it's actually down that end. Okay. <laughs> it's where New Zealand. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. Has the, mag the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, and they wander around a bit, you know, like it's in Canada, or well, it was in Canada, it's actually been heading across to, it's heading in the direction of Russia at the moment. Okay. And the South Pole one is off a bit to the side as well. But close to the pole. They're close to the pole. Uh, and they wander around, but um, what happens is, it, um, it, after very long periods of time, they do a great big wander, where the um, north one goes where the south one is now, more or less, and the south goes where the north is now. Good heavens, uh, how often does that occur? Well, it's not regular. Well, the traditional wisdom is it's not regular, um, and um, normally it's in the time between reversals is of the order of hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and it's it's true to say it's certainly not perfectly regular. The, but the thing is, if we take account of how strong the field is as well, we might make a graph and see there's a zero crossing point. It might be that sometimes it does fluctuations that don't cross that line, and sometimes it does cross the line, and sometimes it crosses the line several times when it's really going from there to there. So when we look at this pattern uh, here, uh, we can see this is for from 80 million years ago yeah. um, through to the present. Okay. Um, now, now I'm going to show you two cycles that are present, they don't explain everything that's happening, but they certainly explain some of what's happening. Okay. Um, and so the, the shorter one I've done with these little orange blobs. Uh, and you can see that, uh, and these zones are done as either black when the poles one way around or white when it's the other way around. Yes. Um, these things show up incidentally also in the, uh, when they look at the uh, continental drift, and they, you can see the, um, the zone where the C4 are spreading. Yes. When that stuff comes up, it's um, magma. Yeah. And then it sets. Yeah. And it sets with the, uh, with the um, polarity of the poles as they are at that time, and it retains those. So we have a geological record. Yeah. Of what's by looking at the fissures of the tectonic plates. Yes, yeah, that's right. And at those points, you see this pattern. And a mirror image of it on the other side. Yes. And it's running all down the Pacific and around the Atlantic. And in, in the lucky places in the Pacific, there's some parts where you get really huge. You can measure this back a huge distance in time. What uh, does that tell us about the sun? Uh, not telling us anything about the sun. It's okay. all about the Earth. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, uh, because the sun's poles reverse every 11 years. Yes. And then 22 years is back to where it was. Yep. So it's a much, much shorter period. Uh, than what's happening for the Earth. We'll come back to that maybe in another talk. Uh, so what we see here is this dark light, dark light, and then we see um, a place where there's two little dark ones, and then one little dark one, then two little dark ones, and then a little cluster, then a dark. But the orange ones you'll see are lining up on average where there's an, either a dark one or a little cluster of dark ones, right? Yes. Uh, and we can follow that out to about here. After that, it gets lost um, maybe the sh maybe the shorter term fluctuations here have been lost. Maybe mm. weren't any. I suspect they probably were. There's the odd one showing, uh, but certainly for the last thirty million years, we can see this regularity, and the period that that I determined from this is one point one one million years wow. is the period of those reversals. About every one point one one million years, the yeah. magnetic fields of the Earth will reverse. Well, they will tend to be that way or that way. Okay. Uh, and alternative, it will come back after 1.11. 1. 1. 1. There will be, there are extra reversals. We can see quite clearly that there were, there were several extra reversals in these periods. Um, but the dominant direction that they're in over a period of hundreds of thousands of years will tend to be this way, then this way, and then back to this way after 1.1 million years. But there will be some fluctuations from that. Yes. Um, if we drew it as a graph, if, if we had a zero point here, the things wandering about, and sometimes it crosses the zero several times. This long wave here is 1.1 million years, yeah. but there's shorter fluctuations that may sometimes call reversals other than that. So uh, the data that we really want to process on this is the actual measure of how strong the magnetic field was in each direction as well and make a series. And from that we could find not only this period and the other period I'm going to tell you about, we could find some other shorter periods probably as well. Indeed. Yeah. Now the, the other period I want to show is a nine million year period approximately 
Um, I suspect it's probably exactly eight times that. But I've marked that with these green patches. And you can see that there's a lot of dark there. There's a lot of dark here. And this period, there's a lot more light. The, 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 the dark patches are shorter and the light patches are longer. Yeah. And again, there's more dark there, more dark there, more dark there, more here. There, not really there, there and there. But um, there's a tendency for there to be more dark um, every nine million years um, and more light in the in-between periods. It's not 100%, but it's um, it's most definitely a pattern that's there. Yes. Uh, we can see the odd place where uh, it didn't really quite do the dark there and did a little extra dark there where it should have been light, but there's a lot of light around it. Uh, so uh, I think that's reasonable to say that there is that period. Yes. Now, this, this period of time, 1.11 million years, um, is also known in astronomy. Um, the, um, the outer planets yep. very slightly influence each other's orbits. Well, when I say very slightly, they actually quite a lot influence each other's orbits. Jupiter and Saturn's masses are... Um, Jupiter is one thousandth the mass of the Sun. So when Saturn's going by, it has an effect on it. Yep. It's not insignificant because it's much closer than the Sun. Yeah. And so Saturn and Jupiter's orbits do vary around. Um, and the, um, the places they go vary by several degrees over the sky yep. as a result of these interactions. And because, they, because there's a cycle where Jupiter's period is 11.86 years and Saturn's is 29.46, if you take two times Jupiter, you get about 59 years. And if you take... Um, sorry, two times Saturn, you get about 59 years, and five times Jupiter, you get the same, a similar figure, 59 years. Yeah. So every 59 years, which means every two orbits of Saturn and every five of Jupiter, they both come back to the same point in the sky at the same time. Yeah. In that time, um, Jupiter will have over taken Saturn three times, they will have conjunctions in three parts of the sky. So they have one set there, one set there, one set there, and then they just a slightly different place the air that slightly moves on, and that whole thing slowly rotates, and after 880 years it comes back to the same place. Yes. And this is called the great something or other of Jupiter and Saturn, mm -hmm. um, and um, it has quite an effect on, on all that stuff. Now, um, uh, their distances will be slightly affected over that time, but the distances of the planets, there are some much longer cycles than that. Um, and the particularly interesting one is Jupiter and Neptune have an energy exchange of, of a period 1.11 million years, exactly the same as this. Um, and in that time, the distances from the Sun will go slightly more, slightly less, slightly more, slightly less. Yes. Um, and there's, um, there are other ones, that other things that show uh, sometimes 2.22 million years. And when we look at the whole cascading structure of um, harmonics, um, I suspect that this one, which we've only got an approximate measure of here, will turn out to be accurately eight times this. And so we, we will get, um, we can link these in with this whole universal set of cycles that we can find yes. harmonic and related. Um, so that one there is a thing that I've seen turn up a number of times. And also sometimes 111, 111,000 years, which is one tenth of this. Um, yes. It's, it's, um, and that can cause uh, magnetic uh, pole reversal and our uh, compasses will point to the south. At that time, yeah, the next time. yeah, what that north pole of the thing will point to south. Of course, uh, in your compass, yes, um, if you're going to call that thing the north pole, mm -hmm. right, that points towards what we call the north pole, yeah. Um, if that's the north pole, in magnets, well, one that points north, we call the north pole, yeah. But remember, it's the north and south poles that attract each other, mm -hmm. so the thing at the north of the earth is actually a south magnetic pole now because it attracts a north magnet. They can follow the magnet. Okay. It's very confusing, isn't it? It is very confusing, but what I'd like to know is there any kind of prediction as to when they might reverse again? Well, you can see here, this thing is not a large enough scale to. Uh, um, this thing is in millions of years, right? Yes. These are millions of years. Uh, no, those are two million years each, so we really can't see on this, but we can see that the width of that one is pretty similar to the widths of other ones. In other words, it could be getting near to the point of going to change. Much better evidence is the fact that uh, the magnetic field of the Earth and the time it's been measured over the last couple of hundred years has taken a considerable percentage dive. If it carries on at this rate, then in the foreseeable future, uh, it will do a reversal. Now, they can find times in the past where it was doing that and then it went up again in these yes. fluctuations. So we can't say that it's definitely about to do it, yes. but it could be. It's quite possible. Yes. And, and then people worry uh, when that happens, um, 
that will possibly mean the Van Allen belts will get all confused for a period of time, um, and more radiation will hit the Earth, and is that going to wipe out life on Earth? Well, the answer is that simple. It's not going to. Uh, there may be more radiation, there may be more cancers, there may be more some other things, but it's not going to wipe out life on Earth, because life on Earth has existed all through this. That's happened many, many um, times. So. Even humans have, have, have existed. Um, through a few of these cycles, right? Yes. Um, and, and many other animals existed through many of the cycles. So we can say it's not going to wipe out life on Earth. It's not going to cause even mass extinctions. Right. Um, those those happen on much longer cycles than these. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but it may cause some unpleasant conditions. Yes. And it could be quite could be in the next hundred years or so. Or much much more. Or more. Yeah. Indeed, that's fascinating. Um, so so. Um, Generally, if you look in the literature, you will find that uh, magnetic reversals are said to not be periodic. But to me, there's two very clear periods here. That one especially, that one's reasonably clear. Uh, and if I could get the data of the actual individual measurements at regular intervals, or even irregular intervals throughout that whole period, I could do a, a solid uh, cycles analysis and even more accurately work out that period. And if there are other periods, which I suspect there are, this will link to one other thing as well. Um, when I've done analysis, now we haven't talked about this in this series yet, but we will, um, about the various theories of how the planets might affect the sun yes. um, in terms of the sunspot numbers. Yep. Um, and the bearing in mind that the sunspot numbers reflect the cycle of the going, you get one peak when it's this way, and then it flips over the north, south, the other way, and one peak that way, and it's doing this all the time, yep. um, every 11 years, for I think, so a 22 year cycle altogether. Um, that's relating to some planetary periods. Um, and I just told you that the 1.11 is relating to the Jupiter yes. um, and Neptune period yes. um, of exchange of energy. Now, the reason, one of the four theories I'm going to talk to you about is that uh, it is one I put forward, and it's an effect of general relativity on the sun's interior due to the planets. Now, just like the Earth's axis is tilted, the Sun's axis is tilted, mm -hmm. if we take the plane, we'll take the bigger planets, the plane of the bigger planets' orbits, the little planets are tilted slightly that, just a degree or two mostly, apart from Mercury and um, Pluto, which are smaller ones anyway. Uh, the Sun's axis is tilted seven degrees to that. Now, that seven degrees is important because the effect of those planets, it means that when those planets are over here, they are above the equator, north of the equator for the sun, when yes. they're over there, they're south of it. Yes. Um, so the con people have thought it's the conjunction of those planets. I'm going to argue that it's actually how far north or south they are actually creates currents inside the sun that are going either like this or like this, yes. uh, and that that is affecting the magnetic cycle. Now, yes. if that can, there's good evidence that this is correct. I can do calculations that give quite a good correlation to what actually happens uh, with the sunspot cycle. Mm -hmm. The uh, if that's all true, it's no reason that doesn't apply to the Earth as well. Now, the Earth may have some uh, liquid iron or something in the core. Um, if the Earth, if the other, if the planets are above the um, north of the Earth's equator, they will be causing circulations this way. If they're yes. south, they're causing circulations this way. Yes. The uh, the um, the problem is it's much more difficult calculation. For a start. Um, the sun sitting more at the centre, with the planets going around, and you just got to take account of the period. It spends this long above the plane, this long below. With the Earth, it's doing that, but the Earth's moving as well, so it happens. It, diff it throws the times off. Yes. But also, the Earth's got this precession of the equinoxes of about almost twenty six thousand years. Yeah, and we're talking about much longer periods than that. Yes. So therefore, you've got to sum it. The average effect over this one, it, it, there may be shorter term fluctuations of like that period uh, of, of, of 26,000 years, say, in, the, um, in these things as well. But um, you've got to allow for the fact of the eccentricity of the orbits and how they are positioned relative to each other. So it's a big calculation yeah. um, that you've got to have all that data going back for millions of years. Yeah. They can calculate the planet's orbits back that far, as, um, at least to 20 something. A million years ago, it's been done very accurately, and some of the guys are working on going further than that. Uh, and so, uh, so those ones can be um, used to do this. The the, da the means exists to do this; it hasn't yet been done. Um, but those calculations, I believe that because that I know that's the biggest disturbance in the outer 
um, solar system. It's that 1.11 million year. I've mm. seen some other data from the guys that did these long calculations that show there are other harmonically related cycles to that present, yes. 2.22 million years as well, yeah. and those ones. Um, and so I think that though that if that's done, it's yes. likely to show, totally explain the magnetic reversals. Yes. And then we will understand that magnetism, um, we can understand this to some extent already, that magnetism is um, rotating um, fields um, and um, motion of, of charged particles and such. Um, so um, I think that if that can be done and that can be shown, um, then people will not only look at harmonic theory more seriously, but that's not really harmonic theory. It's the um, it's my explanation of the general relativistic effect on the sun, yes. uh, which is standard physics. Except no one's ever worked it out before because they. When I tried to talk to one relatively expert, yes. the planets' effects on the the general relativity effect of the planets on the sun is infinitesimal, and I said yes, and I said but, um, what's the formula for acceleration? Uh, what's the formula for distance moved? Um, in terms of acceleration, it's half a t squared. Distance is half a t squared. And I said, when you um, um, when you have a, the planet above the plane, as Jupiter is for six years at a time, um, he was comparing it to the light bending past the sun, which only is a couple of seconds of arc, right? Yes. Um, but I said that all happens over a period of a few seconds. Here we've got six years. Mm. Six years divided by a few seconds is um, Quite, no, a few, quite, a few million, quite a few million, quite a few million, and it's got this half a t squared, so it's quite a few million squared hmm. times the tiny force, it actually becomes significant. So let's add the element um, of time. And he said, no, I don't believe that. And he wouldn't even work it out, wouldn't even work it out. Still worth looking at. Yeah, yeah. So um, the calculations come out, you can, you, can, you can do them, and it works out that the, cent that the center part of the sun moves by kilometers. Oh. Um, um, and that causes currents, which will be even bigger distances by the time they get to the surface. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, bearing in mind that um, over the distance of 700,000 kilometers radius of the sun, yeah. you've got um, a temperature change of at least 14 million degrees. Hmm. 700,000 of that is 20 degrees per kilometer, right? Yes. So if you move by one kilometer, you're, you're making a temperature increase of 20 degrees. 20 degrees. Yes. That sort of fluctuations in the sun is 0.3%. Um, the radiative output is four times that much. It's the fourth power of that, which means about 1%. So you can explain fluctuations up to 1% um, in the sun's output, but that's of course it's increasing at one pole and decreasing at the other. But the, uh, the net effect will still be a fraction of a percent, which is exactly what's observed in the fluctuations of the output of the sun. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. And for something as powerful as the sun, a yeah. percentage increase yeah. is significant, significant to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the magnetic reversals. Let's mention one other thing while we're here, because mm -hmm. people talk about pole flipping, and there's a lot of stuff in the New Age and such uh, yes. things about pole flipping. Now, yes. um, they don't usually even say always which one they're talking about. This is magnetic pole. Right. Yes, the magnetic pole has flipped many times in the past, will in the future. It does happen, and it's potentially going to happen relatively soon. Yes. Um, so that's magnetic pole flipping. Uh, physical pole flipping, yeah. um, the evidence is nowhere near as good, but they, because of the measurements of the stuff in the seabeds uh, and other things, you can say uh, it sure isn't doing it a lot. Um, but um, people have made models that show that the mantle uh, of the Earth sitting on these lower layers that are, that are fluid, that if, an, if a, you get enough mass starts concentrating in the wrong place, or the right place, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, it can actually go and slip in a relatively short time. A Velikovsky type effect, event, you know, significant event. It can show. Yeah, so, that, so the skin, yes. the, well, it, if, if for example, you had a massive buildup of ice in the Arctic, that could potentially shift to the pole yeah. in a relatively short time, and then of course it would all melt and maybe it would want to go back again or something, who knows. Uh, but that sort of event 
um, is physically possible. People yeah, we have solid that gel out. over a liquid ball. Now, yeah. Graham Hancock observed that there is some physical evidence of a little bit of a shift going on in the uh, in the poles, not a reversal, but yeah. a shift every twelve and a half thousand years or so. Yeah. And he looks at the uh, the lake bed in the imprint, mm -hmm. Lake Titicaca in Argentina, and yeah. other uh, bits of physical evidence uh, yeah. geologically all around the world. Yeah. And he thought that maybe this was like an equatorial shift of the precession of the equinox. Yeah, something so, to do with, something yeah, to do with yeah, that. Yeah. So another one we might mention while we're talking about those is that the um, the, the physical pole of the Earth, the rotation axis, mm -hmm. um, does a little wobble. Yeah. Um, it does a. I think it does an annual one. It does a lot of number ones, but one of them is called the Chandler. Um, yes, the Chandler. Effect. Uh, Chandler one, which is um, um, three hundred something or other days. Uh, it misses by a year, and if you take the beats between that and a year, you get 6.4 years. And we will see a number of these related phenomena that pop up with a 6.4 year period. Um, mm. Anything that might be considered loosely related to these sort of things of wobbles and effects uh, in that time range here. Uh, wow. So there's a lot going on with the poles yeah. and uh, the magnetic, the shifting of the poles physically a little bit off from where they are, and these do happen. These are over great periods of time. They affect us one way or another when they do. But it's not going to happen a week and a half from now. No. no. Maybe a century and a half from now.